Hey guys, this is Jason Matthew here from Trinidad and Tobago and welcome to the Biochem GM YouTube channel. So today we're going to be looking at fates of pyruvate worksheet. This is a glycolysis worksheet and um, only attempt this worksheet if you think your glycolysis kung fu is good enough. If you think that you need some you know revision and so on please go to the youtube channel there there's a, a video about the fates of pyruvate also check your textbooks your notes and so on all right come prepared and bring your pen and your paper because you are doing this worksheet i'm just here as a guide so the first question is this state the three fates of pyruvate so you should start writing now guys state the three fates of pyruvate well, first of all, you need to figure out well, whether oxygen is present or not. So if oxygen is present, then the pyruvate is converted to acetyl-CoA, which can then enter the TCA cycle. When oxygen is not present, on the other hand, for instance, under anaerobic conditions, the pyruvate will be either be converted to lactate all right, or ethanol. Which fate of pyruvate will produce the most ATP? In other words, you just gave me three fates of pyruvate. And they're asking you which one of those three will produce the most ATP. Correct? So pyruvate converted to acetyl-CoA, then enters the TCA cycle followed by the electron transport chain. That will generate the most amount of ATP. Name the enzyme that catalyzes the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. In other words, the link reaction. What enzyme catalyzes the link reaction? That's right. It happens to be my favorite enzyme as well. Pyruvate dehydrogenase. All right. So I'm hoping that you, all, you got all right so far. If not, I would recommend that you go look at your notes. You know, maybe you just need to brush up on a few things. So let's go on. Under normal cellular conditions, is the reaction that pyruvate dehydrogenase catalyzes reversible? So the question here is this. The PDH enzyme, does it catalyze a reversible reaction under normal cellular conditions? So think about it. When you're writing this equation, when you're writing the equation for this, that this enzyme catalyzes, do you put a reversible arrow or do you put an arrow going in one direction? Well, the answer is this: the PDH, which is the pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme, catalyzed reaction is irreversible. In other words, it's non-reversible. It's unidirectional. It goes only in one direction. Name the enzyme that converts pyruvate to lactate. Right, so you should have lactate dehydrogenase. And the other part of the question now is is this reaction reversible? So you have lactate dehydrogenase and you want to know if this reaction is reversible. This reaction is indeed reversible. So that's a point to note. Under normal physiological conditions in the cell, the Pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme, which we just saw on a previous slide, it catalyzes a non reversible reaction. In other words, it only goes in one direction. Now, on this slide, the conversion of pyruvate to lactate, which is catalyzed by the lactate dehydrogenase enzyme, that reaction is reversible. So, there's little things to note, you know, especially for the multiple choice questions and so on. So where in the human body is the formation of lactate a major fate of pyruvate? And I'll give you a little hint that maybe you might need to state under some certain conditions that this might happen. So I'm thinking about, about three places. Tell me about three parts in the body that you would have the formation of lactate taking place. Alright, so the first one you should have, or at least one of them that you should have, would be erythrocytes. Erythrocytes are mature red blood cells. And what do you know about mature red blood cells? Alright, so erythrocytes is a big fancy word for red 
blood cells. Now, the material red blood cell, well, first of all, what's the function of a red blood cell? That's right. It is used to transport oxygen. And to really maximize on that, what the, 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 um, the red blood cell basically has nothing in it but hemoglobin. So in other words, it doesn't have any organelles. It has just it, it maximizes the amount of hemoglobin that it can contain because that's the oxygen carrying pigment. So the more hemoglobin, the more oxygen this little red blood cell will be able to carry. So it's 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 very ironic that you have this cell that has the most amount of oxygen it could ever want, yet it has to do anaerobic respiration and convert its pyruvate to lactate and the reason for that is that it, it lacks organelles the erythrocytes lacks organelles for aerobic respiration to take place in other words for the tca cycle and the electron transport chain and all of that to take place you need mitochondria erythrocytes do not have any mitochondria Another place would be actively exercising muscle. Now, if you just put muscle alone, you're going to get yourself in some trouble. Because under normal circumstances, your muscle will be receiving enough oxygen that the pyruvate will enter the, the, um, the, the TCA cycle. It's under situations of active exercise where you have vigorous contraction, what you're going to happen there is that not enough oxygen is reaching the muscle in that situation therefore the pyruvate is converted to lactate because that is that kind of anaerobic conditions being set up there and the third one i was thinking of would be the lens and cornea of the eye now everyone knows that there are light rays coming into the eye so you don't want a lot of blood vessels in there where you get reflection of surfaces so basically the lens and the cornea is poorly vascularized and therefore there's not enough there's not enough oxygen it's not there's not a lot of oxygen reaching there so it relies on it converting pyruvate to lactate so next question under anaerobic conditions pyruvate is either converted to lactate or ethanol what is the importance of this so the question here is this you know when there's no oxygen around so therefore the pyruvate must be converted to lactate or ethanol but, but what is the importance of this why why it is that the cell must do this all right so think about it this is a this is a big question this is those kind of questions that will separate the sheep from the goat as they would say all right let's see if you top of your game now well all right but what you should be thinking about is um that in the cell there's a fixed amount of NAD plus now glycolysis right in one of the reactions in glycolysis it consumes NAD plus and converts it to NADH now there's a fixed amount of NAD plus all right meaning that if when the NAD plus runs out therefore glycolysis cannot take place so what the role of forming lactate on ethanol does is that it regenerates NAD plus so that glycolysis could continue all right so please do not be confused eh? Lact by you producing lactate or by you producing ethanol you're not increasing the amount of ATP being produced the function of converting pyruvate to lactate or ethanol is to regenerate the NAD plus that is needed for glycolysis to continue now that i'm telling you that is a big question eh? please understand that concept that is extremely important when you're looking at the fates of pyruvate under anaerobic conditions what is the fate of pyruvate in yeast so anybody who has made or know of anybody who may who have made homemade wine you all know the answer to this it is converted to ethanol name the enzymes responsible 
for catalyzing the conversion of pyruvate to ethanol. So I hope you didn't think that we're just going to stop there by saying it, you know, it's converted to ethanol. We need to raise the game a little bit. What are the enzymes involved? And you see, I kind of help you. I tell you it's enzymes, so you know it's more than one. All right. The other enzyme that we, we met so far was pyruvate dehydrogenase and lactate dehydrogenase. Now with ethanol, it's more than one enzyme. Do you know the names of these enzymes, guys? That's correct. Pyruvate decarboxylase and alcohol dehydrogenase excellent job guys now i hope you're not getting too fed up on me right now you know we have probably one more question so just bear with me all right guys so now we are on the last final question and it's a, a little tricky one one for the road which enzyme involved in the conversion of pyruvate to ethanol needs tpp as a cofactor you should know that TPP stands for thiamine pyrophosphate. So which enzyme involved in the conversion of pyruvate to ethanol needs TPP as a cofactor? And if you were paying attention, you were writing down your answers. You know there were two enzymes that are involved in the conversion of pyruvate to ethanol. And I'm asking you which one of those two uses TPP as a cofactor. So you should have rightfully said pyruvate decarboxylase. All right. Now there are other enzymes that, when you're studying metabolic pathways, that you're going to come across that uses TPP as a cofactor as well. For one of them will be my favorite enzyme, which is PDH pyruvate dehydrogenase, and another enzyme is um, transketolase. So you can look up, read up some more about TPP. All right. So as usual, guys, I just like to thank you and tell you to LSC like. If you think this video was helpful, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, to the YouTube channel if you haven't as yet, you know, become a biochemian, as well as give us your comments, your feedback, you know, let me know if you got all the questions correct in one go, you know, if this question has helped you in your exam, please let us know, you know, and as usual guys, thank you for all the support and love that you send our way, that's very important, we really appreciate it. So guys, more videos coming soon. Take care.